Well, good morning again. Uh, in seasons like we're experiencing right now, uh, as we all know, the, the governor this week just gave a three-week stay-at-home order. And in moments like this, when, when we hear news like that, have you ever wondered, um, what do we do? Where do we turn? Uh, where is our refuge in all this? This is a time that for many of us, it's, it's challenging, right? It's a time where I'm sure as the, the days and weeks set in, it's a, a moment where we're feeling some isolation, some loneliness, some fear, some anxiety. And, and where do we turn in all this? Well, thankfully, the Bible was written by real people who experienced real feelings that are just like us. And so the cool thing is it's not something we look at and it's archaic and has no bearing on our life. No, this is something that we can read and it's real to us in our context, in our life. And, and one of the greatest examples of this comes from the story of David. Uh, for those of you who don't maybe remember all the parts of the story of David, remember he was the shepherd boy who uh, was appointed to be king, even though his older brothers looked like they were the ones that would more naturally fit as king. He was called to be the king of Israel, and so he was anointed even to be the king. But the problem was there was a king who already existed whose name was Saul. And so as the story progressed, remember that, that Saul and his army was standing before Goliath and nobody would face him. And David came out from the, the fields and was checking in on his brothers. And he decided that he was going to go and face the giant Goliath and he defeats the giant Goliath. And then what happens is the story unfolds is David becomes famous. Um, in fact, uh, he was kind of the ladies man. And so women would write songs about him where they would say that Saul has slain his thousands, but David has slain his tens of thousands. And so Saul Saul was jealous because David became more and more famous. And so what happens in the story of the Bible as you continue to read through the book of 1 Samuel is that Saul tries to kill David on numerous attempts, um, numerous times. And finally, we, we get to the point in 1 Samuel chapter 22 where David is looking for a place to run. He's looking for a place of refuge when he's being attacked. And it just so happens he, he goes to a cave. It says this in 1 Samuel chapter 22. David departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. Now, what's interesting is, is he goes to this cave and we don't know exactly how long he's at this cave. We do know that as, as the narrative continues, eventually his brothers and his father, they hear about it and they go to David uh, because they're also threatened. Their lives are threatened by Saul as well. So they go to David and then uh, here at this cave, eventually this is where uh, David's mighty men begin to amass. All these wicked, worthless people gather to David and he begins to form an army. But initially it's just David in the cave. And I've heard some commentators say that he may have been there for a minimum of three months. Now, I don't know where they got that from. Uh, I don't know how we would glean that from the text, but let's just say it was three weeks, right? Just like us. Three weeks in a cave is a long time. I realize that for us right now, we're concerned about three weeks at home, but let's, let's be honest. We've got Netflix, okay? We, we've got Disney+. Plus. If you're complaining right now because it's the fourth time you have to watch Frozen 2 on Disney+, Plus, just know that David had nothing to do while he was in this cave, right? He, he was probably watching some rats fight over a piece of bread. That's the most entertaining thing that David is going to do in this cave. So he's stuck in a cave all alone. He can't leave because if he leaves the cave, he's going to be killed. It's a threat to his life. He's lonely. He has anxiety. He has fear. There's isolation. I mean, this is real isolation. And so David more than us, is feeling the feelings that, that we, we fear right now, that we're experiencing. And yet in the midst of this, this is what I love. David writes a, a poem. He writes a psalm, and I'm going to turn there. This is actually Psalm 57, and this is, I think, where we get the answer of where we turn to, where our refuge is in the midst of the storm. Notice what David says. I love this. He says this, Be merciful to me, O God. This is Psalm 57, verse 1. Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me. That word can also be translated, be gracious. He says, for in you, Lord, my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings, I will take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by. Now, I realize that the coronavirus is one of those things right now that for this is all new territory for us. It's new for me. It's new for you. There's a lot of fear as to what's going on around us. But I want you to know that until this passes us by, until the storms pass us by. The storms of destruction go. Until then, scriptures clearly reveal that we have a place of refuge. We can take refuge in the shadow of his wings. This is incredible news for us. We're not in this alone. We have God. He's there. He's present. And we can dwell in his shadow. This reminds me of Psalm 91.1, which says, He who dwells in the shadow of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And so this is great news for us. And so I just hope that you just take comfort uh, this morning in this amazing news 
that no matter what we're facing around us, when we're stuck at home, man, we have a place of refuge. It's the Lord. And so we can take our refuge in him and the shadow of his wings.